were you doing ringing me in the middle of the night? It was 4 a.m. I was worried. JJ was crying and Maya was gone. Mum, she's losing it. Look at Maya go. That's enough, Maya. Come on in. I can't let you punish yourself and destroy yourself. Please. <sighs> Yourself a nurse, my Jeffries. How much training did you do for this fun run? Not enough, obviously. Well, you should have known better than to get yourself dehydrated. I know, but it's all for a good cause, though. I don't quite see the logic myself. Where's the sense in you nearly killing yourself so Amelia can get his medication? Is that really an efficient use of the nation's health resources, I wonder? All right, all right. So, um, how have you been sleeping? Fine. And uh, eating properly? Probably not as well as I should. The charity's been keeping me pretty busy. You uh, don't really need me to give you the rest of the lecture, do you? I'll look after myself, I promise. Good. Excuse us. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. <sighs> Mother Teresa in running shoes. She's making me feel guilty I didn't do the stupid run myself. If you ask me, she's the one with the guilty conscience. Hey? You work it out. If you're looking for some sort of redemption, you're going a very strange way about finding it. You're not going to achieve anything by wasting everybody's precious time in here, are you? I know you don't want to be here, so just go. I'm worried about you, well, Maya. Don't be. Don't give me another thought. I'm on my own. You've made that very clear. Mate, if I can prize you off that bar stool long enough, I'm going to have your name engraved on it. If you're sick of the side of me, just say so. Plenty of other bars. There's plenty of other women, too. Hey? That's why I'm seeing so much of you, isn't it? No girlfriend. No regrets either. You sure? Yep, me and Tracy, it, um, it wasn't right. Right. Mm. So instead, you're going to spend the rest of your life propping up my bar and moping. Or what else am I meant to be doing? You're a free agent. Make the most of it. <laughs> I've only been out of a relationship for two minutes. Yeah, but look at me and Brooke. OK, she's not exactly perfect girlfriend material, but she certainly took my mind off Libby. Well, look, the truth is, I wouldn't know where to start. I would. No way. No, what's wrong with her? Well, she works a short street for a start. You won't be stuck for conversation, then, will you? Come on, she's new in town. She'll be keen for the company. Not to mention she's rather hot. Go on, go for it. Hey, you. Don't run away. I'm going to be having some dinner soon. Would you care to join me? We split up, remember? Did we? Then why do you do a silly thing like that? I'm not in the mood, Kieran. Come down here and say that. What do you think? That'll be Daniel. What's he doing here? I texted him. What took you so long? Hey. Don't distract him. We have to do our speeches for the website. Distract me? That's what you're here for. Don't you dare. We have to have these written and filmed by today. Not to mention finishing our newsletter. I thought you'd finished that already. Why do I have to do everything? OK, OK. Where did you get up to? The bit about the common room. We have to ask people to donate old plates and cups for the kitchen. <laughs> Boring. And a stereo. Don't forget that. Well, we have to ask Mr. Pre first. Why? Well, I don't know. She might not like it. Tough. Whose common room is it? Hers or ours? <laughs> hey, this is really good. You think? Yeah. You can really write. Way better than I can. Keep up the good work. Where are you going? Secret boy stuff. No girls allowed. We have to finish this. Later. You coming? Tell you something about paper clips. Um, yep, yeah, sure. A paper clip has two sides: a short side and a long side. Now, the short side should always be to the front, so as not to rip the paper at the back. All these years, I never knew that. Well, now you do, and I'm sure I'll be a better person for it. Interesting thing, the paper clip. We use them every day, but how much do we really know about them? Not a lot. Well, they date back to the 1890s, you know. The gem manufacturing company, they were the first. British. Fascinating. Paper clips. 
Right. Hey, have you heard about the race of people that eat little bits of bent metal? No. No? <laughs> They're on a staple diet. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of Michelle Atito? No, I can't say I have. He spent a lifetime eating metal. His major achievement was the Cessna 150 aircraft. He started in 1978 and finished in 1980. With a very loud, metallic-sounding burp, I'd imagine. <laughs> You're joking, right? No. Look it up if you don't believe me. Oh, no, no, no. I believe you. <laughs> and I bet there's a lot more where that came from. Did you know Paperclip's been around since the 1890s? I remember that now, every time I look at one. So, uh, this guy, what'd you say his name was? Michelle Tito. French. Right, well, it doesn't say much for French cuisine now, does it? <laughs> Hey, um, how about dinner tonight? I don't know where we'd find a Cessna, but the IV's always good. Oh, I, um... Well, go on, I'd love to hear the rest of the story. All right, why not? OK, 7 o'clock, I'll, I'll meet you there. <laughs> yes! <laughs> You're up next, Bots. For about five seconds. Bring it on. <laughs> What's so funny? You, in a minute, when he bowls you out. I'll get you this time, Pots. <laughs> how far do you think that would have gone if the net wasn't there? That was nothing. Let me show you how to bat. Happy in your work? Why shouldn't I be? Exactly. You must be very pleased with yourself. You did a very nice job of making me look like an idiot yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, as if. The chick flick program? You could have told me it was only funded for Marty's. Well, it's not my job to tell you things you should already know. Tell me this, then. Why have you got it in for me? I haven't got it in... Oh, sorry. I can come back. No, no, come and help. I won't keep you. I just wanted to say, well done. I love what you're doing with PCC TV. Great. Uh, thank you. Somebody should have thought of it sooner. Why is everybody afraid of subtitles in this country? I guess they haven't been exposed to as many foreign movies as you have. Oh, you make me sound like a terrible snob. I'm not, am I? <laughs> Far from it. Anyway, it's not the subtitles they're scared of. It's to do. Mm. How dare you speak to your audience in their own language? No, I shouldn't be saying this to a DHB member, but it costs a fair bit, of course. I mean, some people would argue that the money we spend on subtitling would be better used elsewhere. Some people are very short-sighted. I thought I might take you to lunch if you'll let me. Say yes. Oh, uh, sure. Thank you. Uh, can I get some quiet, please? Thank you. Official results, please, Maya. Thank you. Are you sure about this? Mm-hmm. Third place with 21 laps. It hardly seems possible. Oi. Chris Warner. Uh, of course, what the statistics don't tell us is how long those 21 laps actually took. It doesn't matter. There was no time limit, so well done, Chris. Thank you, Maya. Well, it just so happens I did take note of the fastest times. Uh, James Scott and, uh, would you believe, Callum Mackay. Nothing between them except uh, a few years in age. Moving right along. Yes, moving right along. In second place, with 41 laps, Gabriel Jacobs. Congratulations, Gabriel. A uh, fine effort. But in first place, with a staggering 55 laps to her credit, the woman who has single-handedly raised over $1,500 and put in a huge effort to get us all on board. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Maya Jeffries. Speech, speech. I just wanted to say that it wasn't just me. We did this together, and I'm so proud of what we achieved. Emilio will get the medication he needs. And there'll be money left over to keep the charity alive, so it won't just benefit Emilio. I couldn't have hoped for a better result, so thank you, everyone. You must be so proud. Oh, Daniel. You ready? Go on, then. That bat's not going to be much good to you when I get Corey and Ryan to hold you down. What kind of bully do you think I am? I'll make this interesting for both of us. You let me smash these two eggs on your head? I'll give you a hundred bucks. What? You heard. Why would you? You want a hundred bucks or not? No, he's good for it. Yeah, his mum's made of money. Do you?
<laughs> oh, nice. Rub it in. It's good for your hair. What about my money? I said 100 bucks for two eggs. One egg's not worth anything, sorry. <laughs> What's going on here? Nothing. Did he do this? Forget it. It doesn't matter. You call yourself head boy? No, the teachers call me that. They love me. Not for much longer. Ooh, I'm so scared. Okay, we're nearly done here. Good morning. Oh, I see you're using Aquacell. Yes. Why don't I show you a new method I learned in Australia? Midi honey and hydropolymer. It's much better. Sure. I'll be sure to grab you next time. Well, what's wrong with now? I've just finished. Well, it won't hurt you to start again, will it? <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. Well, where are you going? Busting for the loo. Sorry. What's wrong? Gabrielle Jacobs. She is driving me crazy. Mm, I don't think you're the only one either. She told me off for using a paper flip the wrong way. What? Did you know there's a short and a long side? Short side to the front always. <laughs> I must have been sick when they taught that at nursing school. <laughs> now she wants me to redress an ulcer. What did you do wrong? Nothing, except I didn't do it her way. With paper clips? It's not funny, Maya. <laughs> I know, it's like she doesn't trust any of us to know what we're doing. You know, and the stupid thing is, I tense up so much when she's around. I'm, I'm going to make a mistake. Mm. Someone needs to tell her, her man is really off. Bag's not me, so if she'd listen anyway. Where are you going? To find some water. <sighs> oh, no. Mr. Prey! Don't. Sophie, is there a problem? Yes. Look what Orlando did to Daniel. Well, surely not. What is that? Egg? Yeah. I hope for your sake Sophie's got the wrong end of the stick. She has. She wasn't even there. What? I'm pleased to hear it. I can't imagine Orlando doing anything quite so stupid. I didn't. Somebody did? Who? I did. I beg your pardon? I did it. It was a stupid joke. I'm afraid I don't see the humour. We were fooling around. I told the guys that... Thank you, Daniel. I don't need the sort of details. I don't know which of you is being more childish. Why you have to see the worst in everybody, Sophie, I really don't know. And I've never been able to understand why the Chick Flick program hasn't been picked up by more hospitals. If they bother to read the stats, they'd see that it works. Maybe we need to find some money and send you out to spread the good word. Well, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> I can't take all the credit, though. Callum's the one who got it off the ground. And you're the one who made it work. Just quietly, I can't imagine too many of your people flocking to take health advice from the likes of cocky Callum Mackay. <laughs> Excuse you, Dr Denton. We don't have the best table. They're all good. Oh, well, that sounds like a date to me. Wouldn't be with a certain lady doctor, would it? Oh, good on you, mate. Well done. Hi. Are you busy? Why? I'm on my lunch break, and I'm going upstairs. Is that right? Mm, I still have about 45 minutes. Well, that's plenty of time. Mm. Come on, then. I don't usually do this, tell other doctors how to run their departments. But in my case, you'll make an exception. I heard a couple of the nurses talking about you. No nurses gossip. Nothing new there. I'm afraid it wasn't very complimentary. It's all right. I'm used to it. What did they say? Well, they seem to think you're a little odd. Well, I am. OK, but wouldn't life be easier for everyone if the nurses knew why you're the way you are? It's none of their business. You told me. Yeah, that's different. I'm glad you did, because before then you were confusing the hell out of me. People don't like what they don't understand. Tell the nurses the truth and... And lose what little authority I might have over them? You're losing it already. Trust me. Party Saturday night, bring your togs. Wicked, whereabouts? Place up in Ferndale Heights. It's massive. You should see the pool, it's bigger than your house. And it's just sitting there empty? Yep. Mortgage sale next week. Mum reckons it'll go like that, so Saturday or never. Unbelievable. Don't be like that, you're invited. Bring your bikini. Dream on. <laughs> just wondering who I should tell first. Mr. Pre, the police, or your mother? Who are you more scared of? Mummy, probably. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Come on, let's get out of here. She's probably meeting a dorky little mate from Samoa. Too many eggs around this place, so I might be tempted. <laughs> oh, what 
Shannon must remember to pay you. Remind me later. For the room? It's due tomorrow, I think. Yeah, something like that. What are we doing for dinner tonight? Oh, I'll probably just grab something from the cafe. Well, I'm still looking for an excuse to crack open that champagne. Yeah, I'll call you. <clears throat> Hi. Here she is, the heroine of the day. Oh, please, sit down. <laughs> Thank you. We were just telling Luke how much we're all enjoying working with Dr Jacobs. Not much at all, by the sound of things. Well, she is a wee bit odd. I wouldn't be surprised if people said the same thing about me. <laughs> no, why would they? You've got nothing on Gabrielle, that's for sure. I know who she's like. Dr Spock. That's illogical, Captain. Watch out for the Vulcan. <laughs> now, that's a little unfair. Actually, it's not Dr Spock. It's Mr. I think you'll find the half Vulcan character on the original 1960s Star Trek series was Mr Spock. Dr Spock was a famous 20th century paediatrician and expert in the care of babies and raising children. It's a common mistake. She's right. Uh, no offence intended, I'm sure. None taken. As for my supposed volcanism, I'm afraid the real explanation's a little more prosaic. I'm sure you've all heard of Asperger's syndrome. It's a developmental disorder characterized by difficulties in social interaction, communication, imagination, and sensory sensitivity. Go away, I'm busy. I'm an idiot, okay? <laughs> No kidding. Worked that one out a while ago. So did Orlando, obviously. Can I come in, please? What for? To say sorry. Look, Orlando's a moron, OK? I hope you're not considering going to that stupid party of his. No way. Good. It's probably not going to happen anyway. Why do you even hang out with those guys? It's not like I've got any real friends to hang out with. Well, you must have had some back in Samoa. Not really. I thought it'd be easy to fit in here, but it's not. It just takes time, that's all. Want some coffee? Yeah, thanks. What are you working on? Ah, uh, the stupid head girl message for the website. I have to do this direct-to-camera thing every week. Sort of like the Queen at Christmas. <laughs> I hope not, but I keep stuffing it up, so... Hey, what about Mr. Pree? She was such a cow to you today. Oh, don't even get me started on the woman. I mean, Mr. Depraved, she's obviously got the hots for Orlando. It's embarrassing. I mean, she must be completely thick if she can't see what he's really like. But oh no, the dozy old bat hasn't got a clue. Hey, mate, any sign of Gabrielle? Uh, she was here at seven on the dot. Oh, hell, I'm late. Yes, you are, by about a minute. And she doesn't wait around? Nope, she's in the bathroom. Making herself beautiful. Yeah, uh, listen, mate, there's something you should know. Um, what? She's got a boyfriend. She's married. She's a man. What? Oh, but she's definitely not a man. Hi. Hey. So, first things first, uh, what wine are we drinking? Red, white? I don't mind. I'm not prejudiced. Oh, I'm afraid I am. It has to be red. Oh, and you couldn't make an allowance for a cheeky little rosé? Well, now that would be pink. I only drink red. A woman who knows what she likes. Well, two glasses of your very best red, thanks. Sorry, mate, you were going to say something. Oh, no, I'll tell you later. Uh, go on through, your table's ready. It wasn't just me. Everyone here was really into it. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Anyone who met Amelia would have done the same thing. We'll give him my love and tell him that I'll email him through some of the photos from the run. OK, bye now. This is Emilio's grandmother. She's over the moon. Couldn't believe how much money we raised. Did you mention you nearly killed yourself in the process? I did not. No, you were great. And you're wrong. Not everyone would have done the same thing. Shush. <laughs> it can't be. What's wrong? This is from Ethan Pierce. So let's open it, see what he's got to say. <laughs> it's a mass email that went out from here this afternoon. It bounced back because the address isn't in the system anymore. Oh, right. <clears throat> Evening. Hi. Who are you looking for? Lucy and Manager Scott. Hey, won't be a sec. Uh, won't be long. I just got to walk these guys down to HDU. That stabbing victim that came in this afternoon. Oh, right. Not that it'll be much use. I don't think he saw them coming.
why well, we just didn't get a bottle, I don't know. Maybe one more glass. Come on, you can do better than that. Think of all the antioxidants. Oh, it's true. Red wine is good for you, in moderation. But I shouldn't have to tell you that. You're a doctor. Well, it's also good for just getting sloshed for the hell of it, or um, don't you do that? Oh, a drink or two to relax. There's no shame in it, is there? Huh. A, um, a bottle of whatever that was. Thanks, mate. Yeah, coming up. So, how was your day at work? Let's see, I got in at about 7.45. I was going to make a cup of tea, but I got called in to do an IND of an abscess, and then I was doing theatre, so... <laughs> OK, point taken. Mine was pretty boring as well. Next time I start on the shop talk, feel free to change the subject. All right. Mm. Um, tell me about your hobbies. Hobbies? Right. Well, top of the list would have to be um, rock climbing. Seriously? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to drag you along with me. I've learned my lesson there. But uh, I love rock climbing. True story. Yeah, I go whenever I can. For real? Indoors or out? Both. Well, if you've got a favourite spot, I'll tell you mine. Go on. Secret Valley. Where's that? Well, I can't say. It's a secret. <laughs> Far Papa. Down south. I'll uh, take you there sometime. We can uh, climb together. I'd like that. Everything all right here, is it? Oh, fine. Mm. Uh, no, no, mate. I'll, I'll do that. There's a another spot down there. Even better. But you can't go there during lambing season. The uh, farm won't let you on the property. Lambing season's months away. Yeah, so what are you doing this weekend? I've decided. If your message isn't ready, I'm posting mine up anyway. I'm sick of waiting. Way ahead of you. All right, let's see it. Sure. I meant your one. Mine's not ready yet. Yes, it is. I did it for you. Don't even get me started on the woman. I mean, Mr. Depraved. She's obviously got the hots for Orlando. It's embarrassing. I mean, she must be completely thick if she can't see what he's really like. But oh no, the dozy old bat hasn't got a clue. You little skunk. Well, how long has it been up there? How many hits has it had? None. Are you sure? 100%. You see, I lied. I haven't actually uploaded it. Oh, thank God. Yet. Yeah. 